Hi there, it's Nicole for Lawn Fawn, and today I am sharing this card featuring the new Bayou Backdrop Die. This is an incredible die set. This is a backdrop, meaning it's going to fit an A2 sized card base, and it's going to be an immediate scene builder for all kinds of different designs. Um, even think outside the box, flipping it upside down and around and using it more as blades of grass coming up um, instead of maybe the vines and it could be something other than a bayou. It could be a jungle scene for cute little monkeys. Um, you could add different things um, down below in the landscape to make it more of a jungle as well. I am going to definitely use it as the bayou today. You can, as you can see by my um, gators and I have a little bird up there in the vines plus some um, I'm using the cattails the water the blades of grass and the leaves from this to build the bayou what I did first is I die cut the stitched rectangle frame which is going to fit this perfectly by the way from smooth white cardstock and I am inking up my background panel with lucky clover distress oxide ink spritzing this with water from a distress sprayer this is going to just immediately add some interest to my background I'm keeping it pretty simple other than all of the die cutting here there's just a couple little critters and then lots and lots of this scene builder and I think that's what's amazing about this is it immediately adds a scene I've die cut the Bayou backdrop from cilantro cardstock and then I've die cut or that same frame that the stitch rectangle frame that for the background I use the inside piece for the background I'm using the white to layer on top of the Bayou backdrop to frame that up because the cilantro cardstock doesn't look all that great with the Lucky Clover um, Distressed Oxide ink as far as the frame. And I really wanted this to be framed this time. Instead of having my frame the same color as my background, which I do a lot, I wanted this scene framed up. The water from Bayou Backdrop was die cut from mermaid cardstock, and I added some texture and dimension to this by inking the edges with Salty Ocean Distress Oxide ink. I spritzed this with water from a Distress Sprayer as well, but I felt like it was blending into my Distressed background just a tiny bit too much. I like the look of it, but it's almost too much. So what I'm gonna do is grab that ink it up a little bit more along the bottom edge and darken and deepen that and you're still going to see the distressing but I think this really helps um, differentiate between the background and the water a lot excuse me a lot of the die cutting I did off camera just to save time it is a lot of die cutting not going to sugarcoat that but I really felt it was worth it and it was almost relaxing <laughs> to glue all those little pieces or all those little leaves and things onto the hanging vines. You definitely don't have to do that if you don't want to. There is no need. If you're not into doing all that layering, you definitely don't have to do that. You could even die cut this from white cardstock and color them in with markers, colored pencils, uh, paint, whatever you like. I kind of enjoy the layering process of die cutting and this card is very die cutting heavy with some stamp accents is kind of how I consider it. With these stitched frames like this, I feel like the 1 8 inch score tape is perfect for adding these to my card. So I used the frame as a guide to know where to put my background. I glued that directly onto my side fold card base. Then I added 1 8 inch score tape all the way around the edges of the bayou backdrop i'm going to leave the vines loose i really like that in the process of gluing the layering leaves on some of the vines may be glued down to the card background a little bit but most of them remained loose and i kind of think that that really kind of helps with the movement and feel of the card design before i put my white frame onto my card. I'm not going to adhere it yet and I'll talk about that here in a second. I'm going to glue down the water and I can add a few of the other elements as well. We're going to hold off on the frame simply because I want to be able to layer the um, 
leaf pieces and then kind of sandwich them between the frame and have some of them overlapping. And what I ended up deciding was because I'm not using foam adhesive behind the frame, I did put one layer of the white frame down onto the card. So originally I wasn't going to. I did go ahead and put one down. I die cut another one, and that one is going to be kind of the last one we put down before finishing the card. I think building the frame up helps a little bit with the other layers in the center. I'm a big fan of not using foam adhesive on the outer edge of an A2 sized card because it makes it a little tough to get the card inside an envelope. I used to do it all the time and then I realized that when I went to put it in an envelope, it was such a tight fit and sometimes it wouldn't fit at all. So I've put one layer of the white frame down. We'll add the final one when we're completely finished with everything else. So I am stamping some greetings now. I'm combining greetings from the brand new Simply Sentiments. That's where I'm sorry comes from. And then the I was snappy is from a sentiment from Wild For You that was released here not that long ago, which the greeting actually read sorry I was snappy, but since I'm using the larger I'm sorry, I just masked off the sorry from that phrase and stamped I was snappy right there in the center of the card. I think these are clever and cute. We all have those times where maybe we snapped at someone when we shouldn't. And so this is a great little card to have on hand when maybe you need to apologize to somebody or you were grumpy and you didn't mean to be, whatever it might have been. I am going to layer some of the cattails and blades of grass dies. These were die cut from Lawn Fawn Noble Fur and Paper Bag cardstock. And some of them are going to be on the foreground, kind of along that bottom frame edge of the card. Some are going to be back behind this little bit of water. That really helps build the scene so that it appears more to be um, this bayou type of, of scene card that we're working on. When working with little dies like these leaves, these were also all die cut from Noble Fur cardstock. They look amazing. And once you add the Noble Fur to that cilantro cardstock, I think the cilantro looks so much better with that Lucky Clover background. Um, I like all of these greens together then. A jewel picker or a quick stick tool another type of tool that is made to pick up small dies or small sequins or jewels or whatever it might be and put them where you want them to go is going to be your best friend here. I've really been loving the jewel picker. I am using it to just add little, I'm adding little bits of glue to the leaves on my card with Ranger Multi Matte Medium and I have a fine tip applicator on there so it's just a tiny little dab of glue and then I am using the jewel picker to pick up those leaves and put them right where I want them to go. And some of this I am gonna do off camera just to kind of speed things up. You don't wanna watch me add all of these leaves. One of the great things about the Bayou Backdrop is it's not just an individual leaf die in these three different sizes. There are three different sizes, I should mention that as well, but there's multiples in each. So the large leaves have five, the smallest also has five, and then the medium size leaf is actually a die of 10. So you're gonna get a lot. I think I die cut these I want to say five times each. So while it seems like a lot, you're getting a ton of leaves each time you die cut them. I did have a few left over, but I used bunches of them to completely fill up my, my leaf background. This is one of those things, once I started, I really had to finish. Otherwise it looks a little um, lopsided. To add some additional texture and interest to the die cuts, I will take a white gel pen and I'm gonna add highlights to all the leaves, the blades of grass. I'm gonna add dots to the cattails, the uh, paper bag, the brown portion of the cattails, 
to give them some nice texture and interest. We'll add highlights to the stamped and colored images as well, but we haven't even got there yet. Even though I knew from the very get-go what images I was going to use, I built my background, I stamped my greeting, and then we're going to grab the gators and the bird, stamp those, color them, die cut them, and add them to the scene. Here's all that white pin detail. I started early on just to see um, if I liked that before I committed to the whole thing, and I think it adds a lot of interest and texture. I've really been addicted to adding white highlights to a lot of my stamped and colored images and die cut images lately. The gators here are from Wild For You and from Critters Down Under. I went through all of my critter die sets from Lawn Fawn and pulled together what I thought would look cute for this. I even think adding some frogs from the new Totally Awesome would be fun. You could add a lot more critters to this if you wanted to. Like I mentioned at the beginning, I kept mine pretty simple and very die cut focused. And I felt like these guys worked with the sentiments I was using the best. The bird is also from Critters Down Under. Um, it, I just thought that bird worked the best as far as scale and size wise. There are so many birds in Lawn Fawn. I'm sure I could have got something else. I didn't want to pull too many stamp sets. So since this was from one I was already using, I picked him. And he adds a nice different pop of color. This card's very green heavy. The colors of markers I'm using are shown down the left hand side of the screen. I'm using my favorite green color combination. You guys have seen me use this a lot lately. I used it for some Lawn Fawn frogs. I've used it for other green images I have colored, dragons and whatnot. I really have been loving these colors and I think they complement the background and the die cutting perfectly. There's another favorite color combination I use that is a little bit more, I wanna say authentic, that is, or realistic. But for this card, I really felt like this color combination worked the best. So always be conscious of that. Even if you feel like going another direction, maybe try something outside the box. You might be pleasantly surprised. This color combination has been one of those for me. I have been so surprised at how well it works with so many different card designs and critters. My bird is in some shades of browns and blues. The blue in the bird's wings really kind of help pull the blue out of the water. And the nice neutral colors of the rest of the bird kind of tie into the cattails and everything else and break up all of that green in the card. I have die cut my little critters now using the coordinating Critters Down Under and Wild For You dies. And I can pop those little guys in place. The bird will be sitting up in the trees, or the vines rather. That will, I need to wait to add him until I get all the rest of the layering done. But I can go ahead and work on the bottom edge of the card, add the rest of my blades of grass, add the gators, add the rest of the cattails, and then I can go ahead and finish the top of the card. I did add a little R20 to the cheeks. It was a little harsh, so I went back over that and blended it out. Still visible, still some nice little rosy cheeks on, on those guys but not quite as bright and in your face. I want some of the cattails and grass to be overlapping my critters. Gives it a little bit more of that natural bayou type feel. Again, using Ranger multi Matte Medium to attach any of these little small pieces, the cattails, the grass, the leaves. And here is where I'm adding some of that back behind the water. And it really gives the sense of this little swamp or water area in the rest of this greenery. I think it just helps frame that bottom portion up really nicely. I like to use acrylic blocks to help hold down 
die cut pieces, stamped pieces, whatever it might be, if I'm using liquid adhesive, sometimes those things tend to try to roll up and I just pop an acrylic block right on top of them to hold them down while the glue dries. All of my leaves have been added now. You can see some of them overlap the edges. I did already add that final white frame to my card and then popped on those few leaves over the edge. This little fly, surprisingly enough, has become a favorite. It is from the Totally Awesome stamp set, which is also brand new. And I think it adds to the Bayou feel. I'm going to stamp this about five times. I like odd numbers in things throughout my background, color in the wings with the Y19 Copic marker, add a black jelly roll pin to the body of the fly and to the eye on the bird, go in, add my white pin detail to the stamped and colored gaiters and everything else, and my card is all finished. Thanks for joining me today for this card featuring the Lawn Fawn Bayou Backdrop die. The supplies I've used are listed and linked below the video here on YouTube. Here are a couple more videos featuring Lawn Fawn stamps and dies that you might be interested in. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.